Hello everyone, and welcome to the first module of the eHoudini Academy Residual Asset Production Masterclass. In this introduction module, I will teach you how to procedurally model a simple office or apartment building using Houdini, and then how to bring this as a digital asset into Unreal using the Houdini Engine plugin so we can build our building there and play with it. My name is Erwin Heims and I will be your instructor for this video lecture series. I've been a technical artist in the video game industry for nearly a decade at this point, and have worked on the procedural tool sets and pipelines of several AAA titles. This first module is part of a series of other modules of a much larger masterclass that I've been working on for over the last year. And thanks to the support of my patrons, I'm now able to release the first part of this masterclass for free here on the eHoudini Academy YouTube channel and my website. In this Houdini Masterclass, I will strive to impart my professional knowledge of how to build procedural tools using Houdini for video game development. Uh, we will make tools and utilities suitable for world building and level design pipelines, but also for other exciting areas like architecture visualization, just to name a few. I aim to release more modules of my Masterclass over the course of 2021 and 2022 as I finish developing and recording the course. So if you want to know more about this course or download the course materials required to follow along with this introduction module, please go ahead and visit my website at ehoudiniacademy.com or download it from the lecture portal. For those completely new to Houdini, I suggest you start with part one of this lecture module, which will explain to you the basics of how to install Houdini and the Houdini engine, and how to navigate its interface, as well as the fundamental concepts you need to know to get started creating your own procedural assets. Of course, if you're already familiar with Houdini, then feel free to start with part two, where we'll be building this building over here. So let's have a look what we'll be constructing in this lecture. So over here we have our asset in Houdini, and this asset is replicated directly in Unreal. So I want to show you what this asset can do, and let's start with Unreal. If I click on it, you can see that we have a series of controls available to us, as well as a series of control curves. So if I grab my control curve, I can shift it around, and this will change the shape of the building. Furthermore, I can change other aspects as well, such as the height of the building. So let's say I make this building a little smaller. Let's switch it from six to four floors. And I can do other things as well, such as change the size of my window tiles. Um, or for example, move my elevator around so it is in a different position and a different orientation. Right. And as you can see, the building itself changes according to the position of these elements. The HVAC units on the roof, for example, change their positions. The balconies shift and reorient themselves, as well as the windows and such. They also change places when I change the shape of the building. And this is because this entire object is basically one procedural asset that knows how to shape itself in a logical way. And it's been built in such a way that under 99% of the cases, it should be secure and safe so it doesn't break. Furthermore, this building comes with full collision. So if I were to start playing and walk into this building, you can see that I can navigate the building. Here's the elevator shaft. And if we were to navigate to our staircase, I could take that and walk up to say another floor. So maybe let's say the second floor. Let's find a balcony, and we can also walk around the corner of our balcony over here. So all of this works because we've created the correct information from Houdini and send it to the game engine. If I were to look on the roof, for example, we'll find several instances, which are static meshes currently being loaded from my content folder over here. And these meshes are being instanced with the building. If I were to change my settings, they also change position. So let's set a different seed and you can see how my vents will switch places. Now all of this 
is defined inside of our digital asset. So here's the digital asset that we'll be building. And this asset is constructed out of one big asset and three subcomponents that I call utilities. And these utilities handle several different aspects of our building's construction. For example, we'll be taking um, a very small utility that we can use to prevent objects from being too close to one another, like these vents, so they don't overlap. Another utility will be used to texture the mesh, for example, uh, so we have all the information needed, so our model will have textures in Unreal. And this will simplify the process of setting all these things up, which normally would take a bit more effort. This is part of the pipeline of making procedural assets and something that I want to impart upon you in this module. Other things that I want to teach you is how to model the asset to begin with, basically. So let's say we need to build the outside of the building first, as well as the floor plan of the building. So here we have the outside wall tiles. Here we have the floor plan with the holes for the elevator and the staircase, respectively. If we look further down the list, we can find the elevator shaft, which is a very simple stack of boxes. And then a bit more complex, we have the staircase over here, which is a similar stack of boxes, but also includes an entire staircase component that if I were to look at just that and zoom in on it, we can see that we actually have fully traversable staircases. And if we were to change the shape of our building, let's grab our parameter interface here. And I make the building say a lot taller. So like every floor is um, maybe 10 meters high. Then the staircases will shape themselves accordingly. So the player should be able to reach each floor uh, properly. Next to that, we also deal with other small decorations, such as the pillars inside the building for support structure, and these, which are points for instances on the roof. If we visualize those using our mesh loader here, this little loop, we can see that we actually have our meshes being loaded from the hard drive as files. Unreal treats this slightly differently, so we'll also be building an instancing component which sends out the information for Unreal, uh, so Unreal knows what models to spawn from the database over here. And lastly, what we'll do is we'll texture the building using a little texturing asset that we'll be putting together in, the, in this course. And this texturing asset will allow us to extrude and texture parts of our building using specific UV set layouts. So we'll be UVing the building procedurally. Plus Unreal also requires collisions, so we'll be setting up those as well over here so we can use the various different kinds of uh, Unreal collisions that maybe we want to use, such as per polygon collision or a dedicated collision mesh that we'll be able to build, like this one. So if you're interested in following this course, um, well, I'm happy. Feel free to get started on the next video, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.